Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor for another exciting Linux distribution first impression. We'll be stepping away from a Slackware based distro to look at Magia, which is a Mandrake or Mandriva derivative. It forked off of Mandriva back in 2010. There have been three stable releases, soon to be four as I noticed on one of their websites that as of the end of July they were starting to get ready to make version 4 a stable release for distribution. We will be looking at the KDE flavor of Magia, but first let's talk about the installation. I downloaded a ISO that I used on a USB stuck and with that booted into a GUI based install. It wasn't a live distro as I'll show you later in the download section what you can where you can go and how to get it. It was just simply an installability that was just there GUI based. Everything seemed to flow well. Only concerns that I had of course was you know as I do a triple Linux boot I want to make sure that I don't accidentally delete or erase the entire hard drive. I need to make sure that I'm choosing the right partitions and that everything goes well. Plus, I like to use my own grub, my own grub configurations, and don't like to mess up uh, that setting. Uh, once I got past that, it wasn't that difficult. One thing to always remember, if a distribution doesn't allow you to bypass the Lilo I call it Lilo, it's probably Lilo, um, Linux Loader or Grub and it forces you to install it. If it gives you an opportunity to choose where to install that, just choose the partition of the local install that you're doing. For instance, in this case, I went ahead and told it to do it on SDB4, with this, which is the fourth partition on the, on the second hard drive of my laptop and that allows for it to install, do whatever it needs to do without messing up my original grub installation and pointing it to where it shouldn't be pointing to. The only other thing that I noticed in regards to this install was that it did allow me to set up my hardware prior to booting into the OS. It gave me an opportunity to use the NVIDIA non-free drivers which I went ahead and told it sure go ahead and see what see how they work and also it allowed me to set up my network problem is it saw my network card but anytime that it tried to access it or go forward it would fail I'm assuming this probably is happening because of firmware issues and I also assumed that possibly when I went into Magia that I may have to bring my firmware from somewhere else to be able to get the wireless to work because network failed to install during the installation, it would not let me do the updates that were a part of the installation package. But no worries, that's not a showstopper. After rebooting and setting up Grub that I use inside of my Gen 2 partition to go ahead and boot to Magia as a menu option, I was very easily able to get Magia to boot up and go into its uh, desktop here. I was able to get the wireless to work with almost no problems at all and immediately of course it came up and this little icon here saying that there are updates available for your system so that was working so I was able to do the updates and get things running. If we look at Magia's website will notice in their download section that they have three different types of downloads that you can use. I went ahead and went, just went with the classical installation, but you can do a DVD 32-bit, 64-bit, of course, although I don't know why you would want to, to go CD if you have the ability to do DVD. And of course, as I've said in many other distributions, I don't even use a CD or DVD anymore. I just use this USB stuck I do an ISO hybrid to the ISO and then using the DD space BS equals 4 capital M space IF equals wherever the ISO is space 
OF equals slash dev slash SDC, which SDC is this drive. You always want to make sure when you're doing something like that that you know what the drive letter of your uh, USB stick is because you don't want to write the ISO to the wrong partition. That would not be a good thing. But that saves me having to do a lot of burn media and keeps me from having to waste a lot of uh, time just burning CDs or DVDs. But getting back to this, you've got your classical installation, you have your live CDs, and you can check out KDE GNOME on those as well. And then down below for the person who wants to do a wired network-based install, which is just going to download just what you need instead of downloading maybe a DVD full of stuff you didn't really want, you can go with a network installation. Now, I'm normally far away from where my router is and I have to run everything wirelessly so unless they can set it up so that I can do a wireless network based install, which I did do for one of my previous distributions, one of the Slackware based I did a, a network installation and it went really well. Yeah, I like being able to just get right into it and get it going. As you can see here you can see on the right here of Magia 3, upgrading from Magia 2, looking for Magia 1, and soon to come out if we get to their main page, then you will notice that they also have, as of I believe July 22nd, let me open up Firefox again because it brings me right to that. In their news right here, Magia 4 is ready as of July 22nd, which should be the fourth derivative of this flavor. Inside their main community central page, you will find many great links that can help you with installation, finding out ways that you can contribute, finding out ways that you can talk to others who may have had the same problems that you're running into that might be able to help you out, and how you can get involved down here and with the developers and their toolboxes. Magia does come pretty lightweight if we take a brief look at the packages that are here, we will notice that since it is KDE, it is going to have most most all of the typical KDE uh, programs that you're used to seeing. This particular flavor is coming with 4.10. If we glance at the internet section, you'll see that we have FileZilla down here, which is something slightly unique. It did come with, like I said, Firefox and of course everything else that you're used to seeing. I'm not going to go too far into these because I don't want it to be all look at here, look at all these programs, it's the same programs over and over and over again. Let's talk more about the distribution itself because a lot of this stuff you're just going to, as you play with them, you're going to find out it's all pretty much the same thing. In Office it's coming with LibreOffice and I did notice it does come with Scribus. Everything else is pretty much what you're used to seeing. The GIMP was installed with the base installation. Sound and video, you'll notice there's a few extras that I want to make note because if you're used to, you know, if you're thinking that, oh, look at all that cool stuff that's there. No, there's a few things I installed separately. I went ahead and I attempted to use the F desktop recorder, which was an already available application. I ended up installing the simple screen recorder because it just seemed to work better. I was having a lot of syncing issues using the F desktop recorder. I installed the GUCV viewer for the webcam software. It did come with Caden Live. And let's see here, simple screen recorder I installed and I installed also the VLC media player only because whenever I tried to run some of the codecs it was failing on trying to run it with their base programs that they had there so by installing VLC I was able to go ahead and be able to play back some of my video tests while trying to do this um, presentation. In tools I don't believe there was anything out of the ordinary to look at. In development it only came with LibreOffice's base. I had to install some of the QT4 stuff to work so that Simple Screen Recorder would run. 
It came with no games, but in a couple previous test videos I did, I was going over how to install certain things, and I showed how easily it was to get Extreme Tux Racer and then also the Scum VM Virtual Machine. Yeah. Documentation, it had only come with the general help, nothing else. QT4 Assistant came with the QT4 that I installed. But it does have its own package manager, which is nice because patch managers are very helpful. And in the install remove software, you just type in your password real quick and it should pop up. Well, if I can type it in proper, it should come up. Oh, and am I already. Well, why didn't you just tell me? I should already have it down here somewhere. There we are. Package manager. That always helps. And here you'll be able to find a lot of the software that you might be missing. You will need to know, of course, where it's under and where it might be found. Or you can do a simple test to search for it here. Um, for instance, if you are looking for M player, type that on in. And you can find not only the 64 bit version, but the I86 or 32 bit version is available and you can see that I also have the tainted repos installed. I had to do that to get my FFmpeg to work right because I needed some of the newer versions uh, to get some of my codecs to run proper and fix some of the bugs that are in some... that's just it. Yeah, it doesn't make sense but that's just the way it is. I had to install tainted software to avoid some of the bugs in what's supposed to be the more reliable hard software. It is what it is. It now works better. It's all running the way I need it to run. Inside of here though you have many options to choose about how your downloads cache and where it's going to look for the software. Also how you want to group the software to find it easier for yourself and also in the media you can set up your media manager where I just went ahead and chose pretty much everything as you can see here just to make sure I had every chance to find the software that I was looking for without it coming back because I kept searching for things and it kept coming back saying, oh sorry not found and that can become aggravating outside of that and the fact that they do have their update manager which is very helpful I have found Magia to be stable a nice introduction to Mandriva you know, Mandriva used to be called Mandrake, and I did try Mandrake way back in the day. When it became commercial and turned into Mandriva, and they tried to then make it so you had to pay for their packages and things, I dropped out and I have not paid much attention at all to Mandriva or any of its distros that have spun off from there. So I'm going to be trying over the next couple of weeks to be looking at some of those different distributions and just you know, pay some attention to Mandriva for a little bit. If not for myself, but for those who might be interested in just seeing what they are, where they are, and how to install them. I always appreciate your comments. I always appreciate your views. Thank you very much for watching. I'll leave you with, as I always say, if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, enjoy it. Again, thanks for watching. Hope you'll come back and we'll try another video for next week. Bye now.